Tekle Rorope is a household name in Kenya, thanks to her track and field achievements. Considering her overall achievements, however, this is just an introductory chapter in an African success story. As Tekle Lorupe basks in the limelight of international fame, it should be reckoned that for anything to succeed, it must be planned for and executed. Nothing happens by chance or by sheer good luck. Lorupe's sporting achievements, coupled with her charitable spirit, have brought about sustainable peace in the once hostile pastoralist communities on the common borders of Kenya, Uganda, Sudan, Somali, and Ethiopia in the greater Horn of Africa. Lorupe had a humble beginning, born, bred and brought up in pastoralist, strictly patriarchal West Pokot community. Uh, briefly give us your background, your early life, where you were born, where you went to school. I come from uh, Capsite. I went to school to Capsite, primary school, and then I went to Nassau School Girls where I was able to, uh, to train a little bit and because when I was in primary my father did not uh, accept, they did not approve about the women running and so when I went to secondary school for me it was a chance. And then from there I got a scholarship uh, to attend the Rift Valley Institute of Science and Technology uh, to study accounts, at the same time uh, sports. And then from there I went to, uh, uh, I joined a telecom poster in Nakuru. So Nagur is where I found my, uh, my father uh, running skills. And then from there I went to Germany uh, uh, to train and also uh, to represent our country in the, in the world map. While growing up, Lorupe faced various challenges, including the career choice. Initially, she had wanted to be a netball player. In the school, I was doing well in primary school, so there was no way that I could tell the, uh, the, head, the, the head teacher that I, I'm not good in, uh, in athletics. So I was given a lot of punishment, but I realized I have to do something, and I was one of the best. Of course, um, that was kind of like a challenge. You want to do something on the other side. Uh, the family say you cannot, you cannot uh, continue with, uh, with athletics. And also there is always influence. I was good in two things. I was good in netball and I was good in, uh, in athletics. So there was kind of like uh, the games master of uh, netball and for athletics, they were quarreling. So I was punished. So I had to, uh, I had to say, no, I'm not going to do uh, netball. And I was uh, given a lot of, uh, um, I was given a lot of beatings. And then of course, uh, the challenge of school fees also. But Lorupe has always remained focused worked hard and determined. She acknowledges her mother as a driving spirit behind her achievements. My mother was the one who was giving support. Yes. And again, I don't blame, I don't blame him because uh, he realized I was also doing very well in academic. Yes. And uh, surrounding the community, they say, okay, don't, if, I, if, I, if a girl is just going from one place to another, from district to international, and then she will be spoiled. Yeah. So culturally, they, they try to protect. I thought in I thought in a gig on a right core luro. A meet I at Ocaramo, Mojan Yangaraka, Tumbo, Nagangarai, Kur, Lachim, Nagi room, no world. With great pride, Lorupe reflects back to 2006 when the United Nations General Secretary Kofi Annan appointed her a United Nations Goodwill Ambassador of Sports. This young Kenyan achiever holds the roles of UNICEF Ambassador, UN African Athlete Ambassador, Oxfam GB Ambassador in the Wharton Darfur Sudan, and the International Athletics Association Federation Africa Athlete Ambassador. Due to her efforts, Lorupe has as a result rubbed shoulders with who is who of this world. More importantly, Lorupe has remained steadfast in her patriotism and loyalty to the motherland Kenya. She has turned down several lucrative offers to change her nationality either to German, Italy and United Kingdom or many other foreign countries. 1994, when I was dropped by the Federation and they took the woman who was number two and she won the gold medal. By then, some of the Kenyans ran away and ran for other countries. 
But I stood up and said, Listen, I will never run for another uh, uh, foreign country, but in my own country doesn't approve me. And because I'm not a Kenyan, and then I will go to Uganda. Because I love Africa, I love my, my continent. I could have stayed in Germany. I had proposals from Italy, UK, Germany. And I said, no, a woman has to do something for their own continent. The name Tekla Rorope has become synonymous with peace, justice, and conflict resolution in the Great Horn of Africa. Her efforts are well manifested through the Tekla Lorupe Peace Foundation, which she founded in 2003. To a great extent, she has achieved peace through sports. The annual series of peace races organized by her foundation are known the world over. She's been involved in uh especially bringing warriors to abandon that culture of cattle raids and even theft by sensitizing them on need to change the behavior and get assimilated back into the society and contribute to the development of the region. Tekla, ni mtoto moja alikitolea kati ya wengine wote kwa mambo ya kukimbia na baada ya kufaulu kwa kukimbia tekla pia alijitolea kwa mambo ya kuweka amani wengi wao waliopewa pesa walianza kujichenga manyumba na kusahau mambo ya amani lakini tekla kama ni msichana na ni bibi yeye alijitolea kwa mambo ya amani tulipata chida 1998 wakati tulipikana na marakwet sasa yeye akafikiria akasema hii community tutafanya namna gani ndio wakuche pamoja. Ndio sasa akachukua hiyo akili akaanza sasa hii Lorupe Peace Foundation. In 2005, Tekla Lorupe's charitable endeavor realized her dream for peace through education. She proposed the Tekla Lorupe Peace Academy which is under construction. When complete It will comprise a boarding primary school, secondary school, sports stadium, athletics training camp, a health center, and staff quarters. The academy is set to offer educational facility to children displaced and or orphaned as a result of conflict and HIV and AIDS. The academy also acts as a peace building institution as well as a resource center for the disadvantaged. The Peace Foundation offers scholarship to students at different levels of education from primary school, secondary schools and at the university. This noble idea has replaced the gun with the pen, the sword with the word in the pastoralist communities in the quest for an everlasting peace. The Peace Foundation has to a great extent promoted girl child education. By building this school at least I have I have something to say this is what we have. Yeah, it's not enough to have a peace. Our our initial was only to have peace race and yes. just yes. when you have the results that the kids want to come to school, because I had some from Uganda, they say we want to go to school. I did not have the school, and if that school was finished, I would have taken this uh, college to to study. When I ask you to give me your pen, I have to give you something else. When you ask these people to give us their weapons, we have to replace them with a pen. And another alternative, yeah, or disarm their minds. We are pastoralists. Yes. And then also, uh, when they come to education, uh, women are not given opportunities because they intend that uh, we are the one to do domestic work. And let the boys, uh, if you have three boys, at least uh, there is always opportunity that for those boys, they have to go to school and they can always stay home. Yes. And they do not realize that women, you give education to a woman, She will give you the, uh, a good family because she's, this is the woman who can bring the boy up and this, she will bring the leader or she, she will bring another woman up. Yes. Yeah. One of the girls, Melissa, who is in Form 4, is a girl who's been rescued. Uh, there is a conflict. I, I know the girl, Melissa, to, be, to have been neglected by the parents after she refused to be, uh, to be taken in as a wife. So we have been having a conflict between the mother of Melissa and even with Tekla. But Tekla has stood firm 
to ensure that Melissa, uh, Melissa's education continues? If it could not be her, I could have been married. But I'm very faithful and happy that I have overcome those challenges such as even that of FGM girls, I could have undergone. And this is what, is, what faces the challenges, the culture in the society. This assistance of Tegler Lorube has assisted me so much. And in the future, I, I, I think I'll, I'll come and help her because she has been helping me. And then I'll help other, I'll others also. Tekla hails from a community that values close kinship relations. The success of an individual in this community is the success of the community, the country and the entire international community. Although Tekla is an international star, she has nevertheless lived to the saying, charity begins at home. Her achievement has inspired two of her sisters who have turned to professional athletics in the United States of America. Her younger brother, Titus, is a potential star and competes favorably in various races in Kenya. He emerged number 17 in the 2009 Standard Chartered Marathon. As a dad, I'm going to be a Missouri. I'm going to be a Missouri, who it is in recognition of this great achievement that most awards Tekla Chekite Lorope, the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. I'm really proud and uh, this is the first thing that I've uh, ever caught. And also to be to be honored at home in that doctor, it, it will me, make me now to tell my people to work hard so they can give me time to go and further my education because I had to drop my CPA so that I can run to to help my family. The the reason why she is so significant is that because she started from very humble background, yeah. very humble background, and she's risen through determination and uh, hard work and being focused and being responsible, being caring about the society as a whole. So we are very proud that uh, we are giving her this honorary degree because she deserves it and we hope it will inspire many other Kenyan ladies and even the young boys. We have uh, identified this great daughter of Kenya because we actually teach conflict resolution, disaster management in our classrooms. And with that kind of uh, teaching, we should also look around the environment and see who else is making a contribution. And we didn't find any other person beyond this great daughter, Tegla Lorope. Wisdom. God gives out wisdom. You can have all the degrees that you can have and you don't have the wisdom of God, you will never be a leader. You will be the one who is sponsoring people to, to go and fight. So they have to study in mind that uh, to build this country and to love one another.